starting and I will do the share screen. One second. There's I think I need that up at the same time. OK. Um, did you choose one, by the way? Did you choose a picture that you would like to do for today? No, I haven't. One? Should yeah. I do? <laughs> That's OK. We can just do one at random. I know we went through a lot of the early ones, so you've probably seen those already. Um, perhaps one of these later ones. It's OK for me because yeah, maybe yeah, I, I saw some of them, but I have seen some of them, but I haven't talked about that. Yeah, well, for, for future, in the future, uh, you can download this book. It's in the grammar shed and you can choose the ones that you want to do, because I know that some are more interesting than others, it seems to me, and everyone will have their favourites. And so feel free to just choose one, but uh, try this one. It seems like there's a lot of action going on here. So there's lots of uh, vocabulary, I'm sure. I am not familiar with <laughs> this topic, but let's give it a try. Yeah. Uh, there is a wealthy man in the hut catcher uh story for the clothes i, I guess yeah a, a um, high culture store yeah absolutely a, a, uh, a store and uh he chose the color and the texture of the uh this, clothes, maybe you can use present simple but make sure it's he chooses he chooses the fabric okay. he chooses uh the uh, fabric <laughs> yes i try to remember <laughs> the items uh, meaning and chooses the fabric the color and the texture maybe and then the tailor size measures him uh, his body parts to make uh, specially specially uh, tailored clothes for him Good, specially tailored clothes for him. Yeah, you can say it like that, certainly. And <laughs> I guess uh, he don't like to be touched. He doesn't. Or... He doesn't. He does... Yes, he doesn't like to be touched. Uh, and <laughs> he, I, I can remember, he tickling or... Yeah, tickle is correct. He, he tickles <laughs> him. He tickles him. He's very sensitive and he tickles him. He uh, the tailor tickles him uh, during the measurement uh, session, yeah. and he start to laugh. He laughing, <laughs> and he oh. can he cannot control himself, yeah. and everybody was kind of shocked. Can you say he starts laughing with burst. I always say it just because I know we say it a lot. Uh yes, and. Yeah, okay. I think he couldn't control himself when he started laughing. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he bursts out laughing. It, I just say it just because we say it so often. He bursts out laughing. Yeah, he bursts out laughing. He bursts out laughing. He bursts into uh, laughing. Unconditionally, <laughs> I guess. Good. Uh, and they couldn't continue. They, say, they cannot measure him properly. <laughs> and it Cause the chaos, I guess. Yeah. And the Tyler uh, Taylor doesn't seem happy with the <laughs> session, <laughs> but uh, the customer uh, is still laughing. <laughs> uh, and then he he comes to take his uh, tailored clothes when he visits the uh, store he tried the uh, his sweet sweet suit uh, he doesn't uh, like the result because it's not proper and they didn't uh, they did uh, don't do the job probably uh, because of the measurement chaos and they start to laughing uh, when he, they see them uh, with he, his own clothes with the result and the customer looks uh, unhappy <laughs> and confused I guess <laughs> because uh, one uh, one part is longer than the other part and what do we call that part there? one sleeve there's... Good. One sleeve is longer one than the other. One sleeve is longer than usual, and okay. one sleeve is shorter. Uh, and he 
<laughs> the trousers also <laughs> the uh, also look <laughs> unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, you can say one leg here. We actually say leg for the leg of the trouser. One leg one of one leg is also longer than normal, and the other one shorter. And uh, his socks and shoes seen <laughs> are visible yeah are visible or can be seen can be seen can be, can be seen uh -huh. in, in a in a perfect way <laughs> good yeah excellent excellent what do you think is the uh, message of this story uh i don't know i don't want to blame uh, uh, blame the customer because he cannot control himself i guess they should try more harder or they just try harder just they, try harder they should try harder they should try harder and at least they should uh, make the pair uh, equal uh -huh. <laughs> not longer and shorter parts uh, the opposite sides must be equal good make yeah both of them longer than um, usual but not <laughs> this they are they look unprofessional to me yes i, I agree they, they should be symmetrical yeah they should be symmetrical still yes, i try to say symmetrical yes yeah it's good a good word for you so and i don't think they uh have another customer from that specific customer because word of mouth is really important when you have your own store you can promote yourself with the customer's uh, words. They uh, can be talk about I would say with you, you and yeah, your, would... your job. And also they can bring new customers. So Absolutely. The customer's reviews or your reputation. You're right. Word of mouth was good, certainly. Yeah, the word of mouth is how they get a lot of their new customers. And so, yeah, the customer's reviews or, yeah, uh, the, their, their own reputation is very important and how it's spread, certainly. Excellent. OK, fantastic. Let's go on to uh, Jing Yu. I saw you next. Jing, are you still there? Excellent. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's a kind of hard for me because it's my first time and i'm getting familiar with this organization something yeah this is what we usually do i mean i don't mind if there's a book or a tv show that you've watched mm -hmm. or read recently that you would like to retell i think that's also very good but i use these pictures mm -hmm. Um, and you're welcome to have a look at them first and choose which one you want to do but it's a nice way to have something to talk about basically and it's yeah. a little bit of a guidance but I think we can do one at random I think that that's also very good practice because sometimes I do think that preparation is not possible when you're speaking a second language in so many situations mm -hmm. you don't have a chance to prepare and so it's still good to to practice at random and certainly these pictures tend to have a lot of different vocab that we can use as well uh, yes i agree yeah yeah and from which picture or image we can start maybe I suggest yeah. we start at the uh, at the start of the book with Dylan. I know she's been to a few classes before and she's seen a lot of these ones at the start. Okay. I'm going to try and choose mm -hmm. one that I haven't seen too recently, uh, just because. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't well, matter because everybody has their own opinion. So maybe he adds new vocabulary and right. new view of okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Do it again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's try something like either this one or this one. Which one would you prefer out of these two? And the upper one, yeah, um, the page uh, 17. Page 17? Okay, this, yeah. oh, okay, this one, yeah, okay, excellent. So what can yes. you do the first picture? And let me make sure, yeah. Yeah, in this picture, it seems uh, um, a... Um, sorry, there's a, um, a baby in the... in the cartridge, in the cart. Um, well, yeah, that's good. That's very close, a cart, very close. But we yeah. say a pram for a very young child. That looks like a pram to me. Um, it's usually where a baby sleeps, a pram. Mm -hmm. um, but we also okay. have another word in the UK. We often say a buggy. And that's when the child is a little bit older and they're already sitting upright. So they're not sleeping, mm -hmm. but they're sitting upright. But they still get pushed around by their parents in a buggy as well. It's just for older children. And so they're... Mm -hmm. I think this is a pram, really, just because it's flat. And so it looks to me like they, they normally sleep there. 
Yes, there is a pram, and uh, next to the pram, there is a person who looks like a lady. And actually, um, the lady does not know this baby, but uh, she is very curious about what the situation is. So uh, she, she tried to um, make love, not make love. She tried to um, play make, with the baby. Make the baby laugh. Yeah, yeah. make the baby yes. laugh. You can certainly say that. She tries to make the baby laugh or make the baby smile. Yeah, make somebody mm -hmm. do something. It's always that uh, structure. Yeah, but there is a one question is that when I say uh, somebody make love for somebody or of somebody, it means... Oh, okay. Make fun of then, you're thinking. Okay, yeah. Make fun of. She... But be careful. That is negative. Yeah, but... yeah, it is. I mean, when you make fun mm. of somebody, you're quite often bullying them or something like that. I mean, you're teasing them, certainly. You're teasing them. Um, and so... Yeah, you're laughing at that person, which isn't very nice. Um, a, a, a woman wouldn't usually make fun of a little baby. Not usually. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. okay. it does, you're right. Make fun of it is a little it's negative. It's a little bit nasty. Maybe his big brother make fun of him, but not the mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, okay. kids, kids do make fun of each other all the time. They say kids uh, from each other. They think time to make fun of each other <laughs> they tend to. Mm -hmm. i agree in fact everybody does i i do it quite often as well with my friends mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and, and the second negative. image uh -huh. yeah the second image the, the lady has gone and the baby is looking at the um direction looks he's a little or she is a little upset and then and after the lady has gone completely and um uh, the kid looks that uh, he wants to play with himself and so um no i wouldn't say it like that actually there's a good reason why he, he wants to just play he wants to play you don't okay. play with himself and i recommend not saying play with yourself just because of it. it has a it has a certain meaning you might be able to guess it has a sexual meaning being honest a co sexual connotation okay. avoid play with yourself definitely definitely <laughs> sorry <laughs> don't, yeah. don't apologize but definitely avoid it in uh in conversation mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> But yeah, and we say and, uh, he's looking in her direction. Just so I don't know you've got a preposition, right? And they're hard, the prepositions. But he's looking in her direction. We do usually say, look at, look at, look at somebody, look at something. And so look at is most of, 99% of the time, look at. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, look in her direction. For that particular phrase, it is in, look in her direction. Like it's look in the mirror as well. You look in the mirror, not at the mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, thanks. And and then the baby stands up and um, is trying to uh, go to outside. And there was, we can see a lot of uh, person, they are suited and looks like in a street or in a, um, in a mall, something, in really? the company. And then uh, the kids, um, um, meet with a, a big dog, even he's, bigger than the yeah. baby. He meets a big dog. You don't need a whiff. Um, he meets a big dog. Good. Yeah. You can even say bumps into. If you want to use a great phrasal verb here, he bumps into a big dog. Yeah, bumps. Sorry, mistake. But yeah, he bumps into yeah. a big dog. He bumps into a big dog, and then um, after he goes through the street, and then. Uh, he's in the center of the street and there are a lot of cars. He should be careful. <laughs> and after and he uh, goes to uh, something like a pipeline. Good, yeah. A massive pipe there. Pipe. Good, a massive yeah. pipe. I agree. It's, it's a big one, but yeah, massive gas pipe or water pipe or something. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and there is a sign. It's the a caution sign uh, on the pipe. Good. And then uh, he goes through the pipe and go to uh, and go back to home and fight her uh, fight for back home. her or his uh, pram again. Good, good. He goes back home. Remember, with home you never say to. You just say go home, go back home. It, everything else you say to. Go to the office, go to the station, go to the shop, go home. <laughs> it's, it's the yeah. one exception. But yeah, he goes back home. He goes back to the pram. There you go. He goes back to the pram. With with pram, yeah, he goes back to the pram. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then in the next um, image, the uh, the lady has uh, um, come back and it seems like uh, uh, her family member, maybe baby sister or mother. And then they go together uh, to somewhere, which we don't know, but we can see that the girl, the lady has uh, also uh, brought by some uh, gifts for the car, uh, for the baby. Right. So this is a uh, something like a or uh, like a, a lovely family. They yeah. are a mother and children. Yeah. Good, excellent. Yeah, it's a loving family. She's clearly very affectionate. I think. Do you think she has noticed that the baby has gone somewhere, or do you think? Uh, I don't think so, because um, otherwise there will be an extra image and talk about where are you going or Good. where have you gone, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Excellent. She's just happy. Oh, just where I left him. Yeah. And she thinks so it has an adventure, but the lady don't know. I doesn't know. Yeah. And may maybe she neglects the toddler. Okay, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. you think this is neglect. Yeah. You think because I guess he she, she uh, shouldn't left the babe that yeah, you need the past uh, you need past modal she shouldn't alone. good but you need the past modal she shouldn't what's the next word she shouldn't left mm -mm, you're missing the modal verb um that's sorry the auxiliary verb you're missing mm -hmm. the auxiliary verb shouldn't you need a past modal you need a perfect modal been left she shouldn't have left. We say it very quickly. We say shouldn't have left. And if you listen care, you only hear a mm. she shouldn't have. You know, it's just like an mm. in, when we say it so quickly, she shouldn't have left. She shouldn't have, have it's just an um. And so it's not a have, it's more usually mustn't have, shouldn't have, wouldn't have, couldn't have. You just hear this of mm. there, but uh it's still it's still it's, 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 so I should use this uh, structure <laughs> i just mm. listen your <laughs> lesson and you give that kind of example <laughs> okay I'm, okay yeah it's i'm a... not trying to uh, familize and use them without thinking <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I, i'm a bit confusing when i when i teach this part because sometimes i call them past modals and sometimes i call them perfect modals perfect modals is probably a better name but they they see it seems to me that 90 percent of the time 95 percent of the time it's about completed past it is true that occasionally five percent of the time it's about completed future you can use might have finished about the future and a few other modals that can work about the future. But most of the time they are about completed past moments. And here with should and shouldn't, it's past criticism. It's when you want to say she, you know, it's a bad idea that she left the baby on his own. She shouldn't have left the baby on its own. Yeah, or on his own, his, his own as a boy, I think. But um, yeah, uh, so g excellent questions. And what do you think the message is, Jing? Do you think there's a message here? Do you think it is? Um, the, shouldn't have left the baby alone. <laughs> What's the message? The message, uh, um, what I get is, uh, I I think firstly that um, the baby is curious about the the world, and he's very brave. Yeah, this is the message what I can get because yeah. he can go alone, but it's a little dangerous, uh, definitely for children. Yeah, but he, he is very the brave. Yeah. <laughs> I think he doesn't even yeah. notice the danger. He's just. Yeah. Completely yeah. unaware of the danger. Mm -hmm. And I guess parenthood is really a tough job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, indeed. I, you I, should I... always be alert and keep an eye on your child because you cannot guess what's the, his next move. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, especially when they're when they're really young, like this boy, he's clearly really young. He's in a pram. But uh, as they get older, you kind of have to leave them alone more and more. Yeah. You have to kind of take <laughs> your eyes off them. You accept the reality that everyone is individual and has their own boundaries. <laughs> yeah, and they have to get, they have to learn to deal with dangers on their own. They do have to learn at some point. They get, you know, and they can do that later or earlier. Um, Maybe but... <laughs> is the perfect time for that, but not this. <laughs> yeah, not, I think it's a very early age for going out in pipes and uh, and through car park. Well, I hope it's a car park. It's not a motor. It's really dangerous and he could be hurt himself without realise. Uh, without realising. Yeah, because without is a preposition. Realizing. Without realising. Um, oh, I've missed an E. Okay, are you there, Jeff? Can you hear us? Is it Mayor Pascal? Yes. 
Excellent. <laughs> Hello. So how Hello. are you doing? How are you doing? Where are you? Where... Oh, well, I forgot to ask Jing as well. Tell her, sorry, Jing, where are you from? Where are you based? I'd just like to hear. Uh, yes, I know Dylan's in Turkey. Okay. No, I'm based in Brazil. And you're in Brazil. Excellent. Yeah. And where are you, Jing? Just to, just so I, I, I like to know which countries. I'm always quite, quite curious. I can't hear him now. He's muted. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. So, do you want to? You can see what we do here. Uh, do you prefer Jeff or Mayor Pascal? Yeah. Well, yeah. How, uh, how should I call you? I'm sorry, I didn't get you. I you had said. So I remember on the uh, in the grammar shed, you were Mayor Pascal. Yeah, Mayor Pascal. Mayor Pascal. No, I I'm not. I'm not. I, actually, I I I only realized the after. When I when I fully read the email that I needed to enroll in okay, the class. Okay, yeah, no worries. I'll, 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 I want you to write your name down next time, but no worries at all. We're all getting used to it, this uh, new system of doing classes. But write your name down in the grammar shed next time, Jeff. Just put it up there and I'll put it down as number three. But it, yeah, is it is it the, bot, the bottom name of the interest? So, yeah, it's uh, it's on my website. Yeah, if I uh, give you the I can give you a link on the chat right now, because there is a. Um... Yeah, like I, I'm here in the like in this. In the page, I can see the upcoming events and there is uh, this class for today. Uh huh. So, but, yeah. but I. I on any of the posts. Oh, posts. If you just I see the post them, below. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, though. Please don't worry. And don't think I'm telling you off. I'm not telling you off. We're all getting <laughs> used to it. Uh, you know, we're all getting used to this new system. But in future, and I know I haven't seen you before. You know, I know it's your first time, which is great. I want as many people as possible to come to the classes. So I'm really pleased to see new faces today. Um, but yeah, please great. just write your name on any of the posts. Um, you can see under the... Uh, it's not the latest post, actually. It's under that where it says Tuesday, 6, 4 o'clock. Just write your name there, and then that's perfect. And it's once per week, you know, because next week I'll be doing classes every day as well. So I want you to come back next week, choose the day when it's most uh, suitable. And I'll do 4 o'clock because I see it does. It's good for different people as well. So I will do 4 o'clock next week again, probably on a couple of days. Yeah. But um, you can see what we do. You see that we choose a picture. Yeah. Um, Very so nice. Do you want to uh, just do the next picture, this one? Yes, perfect. Yeah, OK, so tell us, what can you see in this picture? So this lady is arriving at her house. Uh -huh. And she realized that, realized that there is a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> stuff, good. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, that's not the word that I wanted to say. You could say mess. I, I think maybe mess. mess. Yeah, a lot of mess, mess. on the floor. Uh -huh. uh, it's messy there. So it seems that someone uh, tried, tried to rob it. her house. Okay, somebody tried to rob her. Um, uh, you can also say burgle. Uh, we often say burgle when somebody tries to steal from your house. But yeah, some, maybe somebody tried to burgle her. Um, her. Her, I think a lot of English would say, yeah, someone tried to rob her, somebody tried to steal something. Uh, steal her and... Steal something. <laughs> it, it, it's... Uh, I don't... Go on. What can you see on the uh, they, Like, they, they have a moved all the, all the things, like... A, Move it uh, uh, up and down, all the things. Shifted, so, uh, maybe, can we say everything's shifted? Uh, everything has been moved around. I like moved around, Mo being honest. Moved everything, around. Everything, but I would put it into present perfect, um, uh, uh, yet yeah, has been moved around, just because it makes it clear that you can see the result. Uh, but present perfect is very often used when you ah, oh, everything has been moved around. What has happened to the painting? How would you uh, say that the painting has been? Because these are all good words, and I agree it's difficult, a lot of this vocabulary. What has happened? Uh, it, it's... Uh, I mean, you can say the painting has been moved, of course. Yeah, the painting has been moved. It's not It's not aligned, you know? It's not in line. Yeah, it's not in line. Very good. Very good. The painting isn't in line. I agree. 
yeah it's not in line it's not level yeah the painting isn't in line it isn't level it's another way you can say uh, level means you know horizontal or in the on the right level so the painting isn't in line it isn't level very good what about the vase uh has been dropped it yeah the vase has been uh knocked off the table i would say knocked off the table dropped is when it when you're holding it in your hand well maybe it was dropped maybe maybe the criminal picked it up yeah and maybe the vase has yeah. been dropped. <laughs> possible um but knocked off the table if you're saying where it came from okay good cool. uh, or, or it, it has smashed as well you can say it has smashed on the floor smashed into pieces it's very common it has smashed into pieces or just we can say it's broken yeah, yeah, of course. It's broken. The vase is broken. The water's all over the floor. The flowers are all over the floor. And we do often say all over for when there's mess all over the floor. Yeah, in that second picture, there's mess all over the floor. There's water all over the floor. Um, and the same in, in her li library. Good. Uh, they have a... Knocked off all the books. Good. Knocked all the books off the shelves. Excellent. They have knocked all the books off the shelves. Knocked or knocked all off. the books off the shelves. Good. And uh, removed all the beddy, beddy, beddy fabrics from... Bed fabrics. Okay, bed sheets. So I think we often say bed sheets or do Bed that... sheets. There's a few different words here. They are all slightly different. Sheets are usually, um, well, you you wash your sheets, or my wife washes the sheets, but uh, you wash your sheets every couple of weeks, or I'm not sure how often we do it, really, but they're the thin materials, the thin fabrics that cover just... Cover the bed, just yeah, cover the they bed. They just cover the bed. I, in summer, I just use a sheet because it's too hot for a duvet. Duvet is for winter. It's very thick, and it goes all the way over you. And you can also just say covers, which mean anything, <laughs> basically a duvet, sheets, covers are for everything. It's a very general word. And you can even say blankets for specific um, sheets that are made to keep you warm. And so all of those are similar words, bed sheets, duvets, covers, blankets. Duvet is usually singular. OK. Uh, uh, do, do you use anyone specifically for, for uh... Uh, like a a thicker duvet uh, cover. Duvet is th a thicker cover. Yeah, duvet is the thicker cover. I think that looks like a duvet in that picture. Ah, uh, okay. So... With, with sheets as well, actually, though sheets and duvet. Okay, and uh, and she thinks that they were looking for her money. Good. Good. Yeah. I remember my dad always kept it under the bed. My dad always <laughs> kept his money under the bed. I think that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then she goes to the office and Good. there is mess around it, all the office. Excellent. Uh, the same in hers. TV room. Yeah, okay, her lounge. I think we often say lounge for the, the place where the TV is or where you're relaxing on the sofa. Yeah, the lounge. Okay. In the lounge. Uh, Just lounge, no E at the end. Well, spelling, yes, but pronunciation, no. Lounge. Lounge. Good. Lounge. And now she's very nervous. She grabs a... How do you say even more like ah than nervous? Because nervous can be just like mm, uh, how do you say like, ah irritated. Even more than that, yeah, irritated is good. It is more than nervous. It is more, but even more than that, like when you want to hit something or somebody. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> angry, yeah, angry or furious. angry. Cool. There are a few different ones here. A few furious. furious, really angry, <laughs> like, furious. Yeah, she's furious. He's angry. And there are some others as well, I'm sure. And grabs a, a stick, a, a sticky? A stick, a stick, a stick, yeah. She grabs a stick. It, a I stick. think it's a rug beater but, or a carpet be beater. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's one of those ones which they used for uh, putting cool. a carpet or a rug and making it cleaner outside in the garden. And then she, she finds her uh, son. Good. She finds her son. Good. And therefore, the. Uh, What's her son doing? Reason. What, what, what does she see her son doing? What is he doing? He's painting the wall. He's painting the wall. He's painting his name on the wall or something. Good. Doing, yeah. Can we say he's doing his art? He's is doing it? art. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> some kind of art. Yeah, he's doing a, a portrait on the wall. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, uh, what does it's she like? It like surrealism. <laughs> yeah, maybe surreal. Yeah. Surreal. But uh, and then uh, she she gets uh, relaxed. Uh, really? Give it yeah. gives her gives her uh, gives him a uh, huggy. It gives him a hug. Excellent. Gives him a hug. Yeah, she gives him a hug. A cuddle is another way we can say it. Gives him yeah. a hug and cuddle. And left the. Yeah, rug beater. beater. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, she dropped the rug beater or, yeah, she put the rug beater down. She didn't hit him with the rug beater like <laughs> she might have done. Yeah, like she might have done. But maybe, maybe, she, maybe, uh, he, maybe he deserved it. Yeah, maybe she should have That's, done it. That was yeah. not a time. <laughs> <laughs> what but do you think? Because that, this is not the Bulgari, just the... Uh, yeah, it's good boy. news that it's not a burglary. Certainly, it's good news. There's no burglar. There's no robbing. Yeah, her stuff. Her stuff is. Safe. Maybe she afraid. <laughs> she afraid of losing his child, at the same time. Maybe they. She thought. She thinks. Uh, her child kidnapped is kidnapped. Oh, okay. Had had been. So she. Uh, yeah. She, had been kidnapped. Has has bit has if it's she thinks. Has been kidnapped. The child has been kidnapped. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, indeed. So she's she's delighted, she's relieved, yeah, that she can yeah, see her child at the end, yeah, uh, relieved that he's still okay. Um, what do you think the message is in this story, Jeff? Is there a message here, Jeff? What do you think? Let's see. <laughs> not all the things are money. Okay, so yeah, not everybody. I, I, I think it. Good. Yeah, I think it. Dylan, I'm not sure if that's how. how yeah, Dylan. Yes, you can say the got, 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 got the message. <laughs> got the message. The undercover message. Yeah, I, that, I think she was okay, she yeah, was she's... concerned about the he, he, her son. More concerned her about son. Her son than about uh, than about money. Yeah, more concerned yeah. about her son than about money. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. I think I, that... I think the they have same concept. You shouldn't leave your toddler. All alone. <laughs> yes, yeah, is, yeah, indeed. It seems there like that. are consequences. <laughs> there will be, yeah, indeed. Most there always are. Unpleasant. It will be unpleasant. <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Unforeseen consequences. Unpleasant consequences. Um, excellent. Do you think there's a message here, Jing? What do you think? Is there a message in this story that you've spotted that hasn't been? Uh, the message is so, uh, um, I think everyone should have um, uh, some. Um, idea or preparation for the anti-thief <laughs> otherwise you will lose some money <laughs> lose everything your home will be a mess and you have possibility to maybe uh, lose your child it's very upset <laughs> upsetting it's very upsetting yeah losing a child yeah. definitely very yes. upsetting Boy. good excellent okay. and also there's an, an uh an, the image in in the center of this page it looks like uh, the lady, she didn't close the window uh, well. So the thief maybe passed the window and then goes into home and then do something bad. So we need to close, close our window. Yeah. Okay, so keep windows closed. So you think a thief yeah. did get in there. You think there has been some kind of burglary, yeah? Yes, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible that the, the child didn't notice at all. The child was just there doing his art, yeah, on the wall. Mm -hmm. Or something like this. Can I ask two questions about this illustration first? Uh, can we say the uh, flowers are perished 
Man, we see the flowers have perished. Um, you could, you could, but we don't very often use perish with flowers. It seems to okay. me there um, is flowers, another the flowers to def define the situation. This I mean, it, I'm not sure if the flowers have died. I mean, I often say die. If it, you can say withered, the flowers have withered, but okay. withered is for when they dry out and die. You know, um, it's when they dry out and die. All flowers wither when they're not watered. You know, and and even if they are watered, over time they wither and die. Um, and and so... the second one is, uh, can we say the uh, room as a sewing room? Because I saw that kind of stuff. Is sewing it usually room. having sewing room? Yeah, you could say it's a sewing room, definitely. And so I, I agree that there, w there was often a room, yeah, if, if a lot of sewing was being done, you can see a whole sewing set there. And so, yeah, you could say a sewing room because that is a sewing set, it's sewing equipment. Um, it, I'm sure that there's there are needles in there and string, yeah, that kind of thing. Or, or um, because when I um, use the translate, sometimes they give the old-fashioned options, <laughs> not uh, useful one in this age. So yeah, I, think, I mean things like rooms. They do change. You know, the words that people use for them do change over time. We tend to use dining room if there's a place specifically for eating and lounge for relaxing but um some people do have a sewing room or a room specifically dedicated to different things and yeah i understand a sewing when room I, room for sewing when i hear lunch i it, it reminds me airports i don't know why but <laughs> yeah we do say airport lounge there as well and it's mainly because i suppose they've got all of the seating there and the lounge is usually where you sit down and relax rather than sit down and eat you know dining room for sit down and eat but a lot of people like like me the lounge and the dining room are the same room there's no separation i there's a there's a table in one place and there's sofa in the other place so the lounge and the dining room are the same room in a lot of houses Nowadays, we don't <laughs> have that kind of old-fashioned uh, house flats mostly mostly everything in in a, one place like kitchen parts and lounge part and dining table at the same the, yeah then we say it's open plan and i agree it's very often open plan nowadays where the kitchen kind of loft the same. design maybe nowadays more popular can we say loft Loft, yeah, loft room, yeah, loft rooms are popular. They certainly are here because um, houses are expensive and it's a cheaper way to get a bigger house. You know, instead of buying a bigger house, you buy a cheaper house and then convert the under the roof. We we usually call that the loft room, you know, when it's just right under the roof. And yeah, all along this street and the next street and the next street, you can see that people, they were bungalows at first, all of the houses here, but they've all been converted into two floor houses over time because it's just a cheap way of um, getting in more space. The other thing people do is get a shed. It's also another, it's an even cheaper way of getting extra space because you can buy the sheds quite, well, they, they weren't too expensive years ago. But yeah, excellent questions. Any more questions, guys, from Jeff or Jing? Yeah, if you could only repeat again the, the examples of how you would you say this present perfect heavy in, in some phrases you, you were saying like, you want to say v. Uh, mm. Oh, okay, yeah, that okay, that's perfect modals. Yeah, perfect modals. That is thinking it, uh, the words. Maybe he that he wants to learn. Uh, yeah, must uh, must and um, drop you, some sounds when they speak fluently. Yeah, so you yeah. use like should have done, must have done, might have done, could have done. Yeah should have done, might have done, but we say should have done, could have done. Is that what you mean? Perfect modals. Well, should have, uh, should so have, have done. Yeah, we had, she shouldn't have left the child on his own. She shouldn't have left. Um, we pronounce that have very often as an of, of, shouldn't have left. It means that lots of natives even make this mistake. They write shouldn't of left. I used to do it when I was a little kid um, and the teacher would correct it every time because it's always mustn't have done, shouldn't have done. But natives, when they're speaking it really quickly, they say it like an of. They say shouldn't have left, mustn't have done, couldn't have happened. And they say it so quickly that you don't even hear a have. You hear an of, 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 
couldn't have left, yeah. shouldn't have left, mustn't have left. And so that's why it's even very often it's even written like uh, with the um, uh, well, it's very often written like this, shouldn't have like that with just an apostrophe and then a VE just to show I, that it's very I often pronounced. Seen it before. Okay. <laughs> yes, I've heard, but I haven't seen. <laughs> I mean, it's more often, it's not so much, it, there are too many apostrophes in shouldn't have because you've got an apostrophe for the not as well. So it's more often should have. It's more often the positive ones where they do it. Should have done. Yeah, she should have, should, she should have uh, looked after the child better. Yeah, she should have taken the child into the shop, something like that. So should have taken but um you you of course you can write it as should have taken and you can say it like that there's nothing wrong with saying it like that um i, I just want to warn you that a lot of the natives if they do use it it's almost imperceptible when you're listening to them i mean you hear the third form there instead of the infinitive and so you know that it's the perfect form you know done or taken and not do or take um you know because should take but shouldn't sh should have taken yeah, should take, should have taken, must take, must have taken, could take, could have taken. And so it is, it's very, it's very quiet there. It's not perhaps as noticeable as you might think. But yeah, we use it for past criticism if you're using should have done or shouldn't have done. When you're saying what somebody did badly or what somebody should have done differently, <laughs> that's usually what you're they're saying. They should have done this, you know, or they should have taken a map and then they wouldn't have got lost. Yeah, something like that. Can we talk about uh, in some lessons, not this one, because we are out of time, but uh, ain't. I don't understand how can we use ain't. Uh, just means am not or is how not. How can we replace and use the ain't? It just means, it means am not, is not, um, you know, isn't. Like am... a song ain't no sunshine, that kind of. Yeah, there isn't. That means there isn't any sunshine. Uh, I mean, the I... hair is missing. But uh, I... ain't. No, no, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I was just going to write that last one, aren't. Am not, isn't, and aren't. Those three are ain't, because we say I ain't, you ain't, he ain't, she ain't, we ain't, they ain't. It doesn't change for any of the pronouns. It stays the same. And so it's the same as not be. It's the same as am not, is not, or are not. It's exactly the same as that. And when they say ain't no sunshine, they're just missing the there as well. There ain't no sunshine. There isn't any sunshine anymore. Yeah, okay. it's uh, just uh, casual. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, it's informal. Like yeah, I'm it. gonna, I'm wanna, I. Yeah, it's it's casual kind of, certainly, oh. but it is everywhere. It is everywhere, and so it's worth knowing certainly. But it is, it's casual English. It's informal English. I wouldn't use it in an essay. Never, never use it in an essay. It's too informal for academia. Um, but yeah, it's it's very often used. Thank you, enlighten me. <laughs> it's all right. Thanks for thanks for enlightening. Of course, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for enlightening. Um, um, what was your question, Jeff? Go on. Um, actually, I'm. Um, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll I'll say the question. Uh, I see the word but like it. Uh, you use it in, in a different context, like it. The word but, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. it's not used as, as a, like to make contrast with it, the other thing. Like, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, she, I, think, she, I think she's good, but like she's a good cooker, but doesn't wash his hands. It's not this this not way, but it's some other way. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and basically, it's... you've got you've got but equals conjunction, yeah, which is a fanboy's conjunction, and that is like the example you just gave. Usually, it, it jo very often joins two clauses, and so you <laughs> say something like, um, "She, uh, she, uh, I don't know, she isn't French, but she loves croissants." Something like that, yeah. And you're yeah. just contrasting two clauses, and that's the typical use of but. But there is another use of but where it means except for. Um, and it's a preposition. Yeah, this other one. When, when but means except, it's a preposition. And um, what that means is that it's followed by a noun, because that's what prepositions do. You get preposition and then noun. And so uh, there is another but, and it, it means except, exactly the same as except for. So if you know except, you see it used something like this. And I'm going to quickly let my cat in, because I think he's okay. knocking on the door. There he is. But, um, you see something like he... Uh, um, I don't know. He he introduced himself to everybody in the party, but me. Yeah, except for me. Except me. 
Yeah, so uh, it's something okay. like that, yeah? Okay, now, now it's very clear. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm reading a book and this is appear all the time, but I, I can they only do. understand very because literary. I'm translating. I'm, yeah, I understand why. It's quite a literary use. You, I mean, do it, use it in your speech still as well. It is good to use in your speech, but I agree that it does sound quite literary to use it. He introduced himself to everyone in the party but me. Um, but it is a second use, and I agree, it's a completely different type of but, because you'd never see the but conjunction before the pronoun like that at the end of the sentence, never. But uh, it's a different use of but, it's preposition. And so when you look it up in the dictionary, but, look down past all of the first stuff about but, where it will be the ordinary but conjunction, it'll be that one. Um, and then look for but preposition, and then you'll see this one where it says but preposition because uh, it's another use of but. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, what, what, what is the u, 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 usual duration for these classes? Uh, so Just yeah, you, as, long as, well, as, as long as everybody gets 10 minutes, I'm, I'm happy. I try to make sure everyone gets 10 minutes, but uh, it depends on the number of people who come. And so sometimes I put a limit of five, you know, a maximum of five. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, and that makes sure that they don't go on too long. But I try to do it um four times a week at least so i think the next one will be thursday and friday but i like each student to have just one per week so that i get as many different students for each class and so uh please put your name down on the list but ne next week yeah well when it when we start we'll, we'll have it'll be our uh, next week it won't be monday or tuesday because i'm going camping but um i will i will have classes on wednesday thursday friday next week and so please put your name down on one of those classes there will be one at four o'clock look out for my email make sure i'm not going into your junk mail or anything like that but you can check the grammar shed because i do put the information in there okay yeah? okay fantastic well i will see you all you next week guys. as i say from wednesday next week i expect but i'll keep you informed i'll send you an email letting you know what day Okay, see you next week. Yeah. See you next Thank week. you very much. My yeah. pleasure. Bye -bye. My pleasure, nice guys. To you. <laughs> nice to see you too. See you yeah, soon. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.